Later that evening, Lot informed Watson and I that dinner was ready to be served. Madam Janet was already seated in the dining room. Her plate was sitting before her, and waiting at both her sides were Sophia and Ash. It is an honor to have you join us. Ash, do set their plates. With pleasure. Would you like for me to help? You've gone out of your way to let us stay, so it's the least I can do. Oh, but we couldn't allow a guest to help. That just won't do. Nonsense! We weren't invited the same as a common guest. Barged in, more like. Please. Y you may wish to take a bit more care with the madam's soup, or it shall... Oh! Oops! Holmes! You could stand to listen! I- I'm so sorry. This was meant to be for you, wasn't it? Let me take yours, then. Please, madam, take mine. Thank you, but I don't mind the first. Oh, Holmes, you must show better form in the future. It truly was clumsy of me. Suppose I was a bit too excited. The soup looks absolutely mouth-watering, you know. Can't wait to tuck in. Don't! What is it, Sophia? Right when Watson placed the spoon to his lips, Sophia cried so sharply that it stopped all movement in the room. There she stood, body trembling as one did from a fiercely cold draft, arms wrapped around her chest in self-embrace. Her eyes, meanwhile, were the only part of her that was steady. She focused with a horror-stricken expression at Watson's soup bowl. Beg pardon, but would everyone here take a moment to indulge Miss Watson and I? That includes you, Sophia. Uh. In the beginning, we thought the culprit behind the strange happening since the late master's death was someone from outside the mansion. But we thought wrong. It was, we conclude, the work of someone inside the mansion. Someone in this very room found it was to their benefit for you, madam, and your husband to be gone. The someone motioned to commit the first of several crimes by murdering your husband under the guise of a mere heart attack. Th that can't be true! Madam Janet gasped in disbelief. In the natural world, and within reach of our culprit, there just so happened to be a cardiotoxin to mimic the symptoms of a heart attack. What is that substance, you ask? The venom of a swamp adder. Then it had nothing to do with money. Precisely. They were stolen for what they contain. A rare substance which is both poisonous and venomous. It was known the master was an avid smoker, so they used this fact to lace his pipe with the toxin. He needed to only ingest the smallest amount once he put the pipe to his mouth for the symptoms to make themselves known and cause his death. Next, we have the matter of both Madame Janet and Ash experiencing health problems within the mansion's walls. Is it a case when we were simply exhausted? It is a case because neither of you were exhausted. That your symptoms were identical helped us discover the one other thing you had in common. You both have gone into the late master's study. Madame Janet goes in frequently, and you, Ash, once cleaned the day after it rained. How is the weather relevant? As you're aware, the wallpaper in the study is emerald in color. The mansion happens to be rather old, so there are a number of places where water leaks and dampens the walls. The wallpaper of the study is a recent addition, however, and though water damage occurs in that room as much as anywhere else, it is no longer as apparent. In short, the moisture building up is causing the wallpaper's pigment to be metabolized by mold, giving rise to arsine gas. Then the room itself is dangerous. Very much so. And it is why you haven't felt well since the death of your husband. The ones who selected the wallpaper were Lot and Sophia, correct? Uh. Yes, that's correct. This narrowed down our list of suspects to one of you. We first considered you were acting in cooperation, but dismissed it upon further investigation. That left us with only one person. Gonna get her. You, Sophia. Oh. 
S Sophia? You think I'm the culprit? Sophia's voice was strained. Her skin pulled back like yarn on the verge of unraveling. Why suspect me over Lot? He is far more... You are aware of when Lot was attacked. I am. The only reason he was attacked at all was because he protected the madam. He did so whilst unaware that the Swamp Adder's fangs had been removed. You see, he was prepared to die if it meant her life would be spared. Now why would he do such a thing if he meant her harm? The only answer is, he wouldn't. She is dear to him. There is more to it than that, of course. You reported to us that the person who pushed Madame Janet was a slender woman. This could not be further from the victim's own reports of having been pushed by a muscular man. But there must be some sort of mistake. Mistake? We aren't mistaken. A mistake would mean the Madame's memory was faulty, but we've concluded the event as she tells it to be accurate. You're lying to us, Sophia, in order to protect another. <laughs> this accusation startled her greatly. You know, as we all do, Sophia, that the madam will be going to complete the inheritance proceedings tomorrow. Was that why Ted ordered you to use the Swamp Adder's toxin to kill her? Why do you- He may have left the mansion, but it's reasonable to think you would continue your relationship in secret. Your face when Holmes ate the meat pie Ted loved so much wasn't the face of someone thinking of a former lover. If we're to position him as the one who attempted murder on his own mother, then the reason you lied to us becomes clear. You tried to stamp out his involvement, even if it placed you in the line of suspicion. Have I got it? Uh, so Sophia, please. Please, tell me you aren't still intimate with Ted. Is it true? I thought you parted ways when he left. Unfortunately for you, that didn't happen. We are still very much in love. The ease at which Sophia's tone shifted was unsettling. Her quiet despair was no more, with each new word sharp as a kitchen knife and darkly energized by a presence which felt long restrained. Sophia! If it weren't for you detectives... She had been boring a hole in the floor, but in another unsettling shift, she raised her head and extended her arm to me rapidly. If you hadn't come... Ah! Look out, Emily! I could not react soon enough. I saw her palm outstretched before my face, blinked, and was pulled into the wild force of Sophia's grip. Her other hand held a fruit knife acquired from the kitchen. I admit it! You're right! I killed the master, and I tried to kill you! I'd intended for you to die a gradual death, but you rushed your inheritance! Why? It would be yours no matter the time. Why go through proceedings with such urgency? Why, Sophia? Tell me why! Because you wouldn't accept our marriage! You rejected us, made to separate us! That was for your own good. I don't want to hear it! Once you're dead, we shall marry, and Ted will be flush with riches! All was going well till you two arrived and ruined our plans! Sophia screeched with a venom that plunged deeper with each syllable. The emotion at its core was all I could comprehend, for the cold touch of the knife pressed to my neck made it too difficult to concentrate on anything else. Now, if you don't want this girl's blood on the floor, you're to get out of my way! I won't be arrested here! There's no running from this, Sophia. Scotland Yard has been alerted. They won't be long. Let her go! They cannot lay a hand on me if I have a hostage! I'll be going to where Ted is waiting. And you can't stop me! I can't stay like this. I need to loosen her grip. I raced through the self-defense techniques I learned from Pendleton. Then Watson's frantic glance met mine. <clears throat> He's close enough. All will be well if I can escape. With all the strength I had, I dug the heel of my boot atop Sophia's. 
She let go. It would only be temporary, but that was all I needed. I shook free from her grasp and ran to freedom. No! Stay, stay still! Watson twisted her arm upwards. The knife clattered upon hitting the floor. A woman of Sophia's size would never be able to break free from Watson's strength. At last, relief came to me as it did us all. But relief was premature. Jesus, is this why you're so late to contact me? You are a pitiful excuse for a woman, Sophia. No. <laughs> Again did I become pulled backwards into a foreign grip. A knife did not meet my neck this time, however, but a gun to the temple. Ted! Why are you... Why? You still not cotton on, mother? I am the one pulling the strings. And yes, all for the money. Ted's smile grew more twisted. I was close enough to catch the haze of alcohol lining his breath. I never intended to have her help me. But then I had to botch pulling the fangs out of that damn snake. His confession did little when the proofs were apparent, and his arm wrapped in a bandage was enough to award him guilt. Can't very well do my dirty work with this now, can I? And I would do it all again with pride! Anything to reach our happily ever after! You made a plot to kill your parents and manipulate your lover into becoming a murderer for money? You're twisted. You're completely insane. Don't care much of what you think, detective. Just get on with it. Give me the woman. Ted pressed on the gun's trigger a hair to heighten his threat. If you don't, Miss Assistant here won't see tomorrow. No one wishes for that now. Ugh. I'd gone from imprisonment to freedom to imprisonment in short order, bound against my will by weapons both sharp and explosive in nature. My stomach could not take more of this. It was plummeting and rising to my throat at once. My circumstances were now Sophia's in that I could not wrestle free from a man's grip, and yet our captors made all the difference in our fear. I mustn't do anything reckless. But then, what is mindful against a gun? Watson could not have appeared more pained. With reluctance, he let Sophia go free. Oh, Ted! You don't know how I've missed you! Come, we must be quick with our escape! Sophia rushed to her lover's side. There was purity in her then, with eyes made moist as she waited to receive a reward for her complete devotion. An embrace? A kiss? To flee into the night to where they could love one another openly and to where their titles were husband and wife? Of course I'll be getting out of here. But not you. You'll only leave once the yard has you in handcuffs. Oh! A kick, then a fall. She dropped to her knees and curled her arms round her stomach in pain. You... You're joking. This is a lie. After all I've done. After all I've done for you. After all you've done, yes. And I have more work for you. Spend your days in a cell for your man. The world will know you as a serial murderer after I put a bullet in every soul here. You truly are the worst excuse of a man. Say whatever you like. I know what I want, and I want booze. I want to gamble. I want whores. You can't! Ted, why? Dad, how could you do this? You yeah, might what, try to keep that mouth of yours shut, Mother. I'm not above killing family first. Oh. The gun was now pointed directly at the madam. For God's sake! Just, just stop! That goes for you, too. Don't you value your assistant's life? Damn it! Watson's face contorted. He was lost. We could do what our captor wanted. Take his kicks, hear his abuse, and shut our mouths as he waved his weapon around like a child's toy. We could obey and still end up dead. Reason was giving way to panic. My heart thudded at a rate that cut my breath short. All for this moment. This moment when at last my sense of relief was true. 
I knew something was amiss upon that telephone call. You are ever the master at stirring of mischief, my lady. A welcoming and familiar voice, though not even Ray's, had overtaken the room. You- ah! I blinked. A bullet darted across the room and Ted's gun fell to the floor. The clattering sound was drowned out by a string of obscene oaths from the man. Gah! Who in God's name are you? Do pardon me if I sound curt, but I've no interest in humoring your questions presently. Are you hurt, my lady? Gah! Pendleton had no interest in letting the man sit comfortably either. He had little patience for anyone who thought to place me in harm's way. The butler swiftly approached. He presented a fist to the gut, then another, and another, until the gut was weakened with pain and the burly hand that held me loosened. P pendleton All is well. Please, step behind me where it's safe. Quickly now. I'd been freed. He guided me behind him, and I was all too happy to listen. Gah! You damn- Don't move! Ah! Ted attempted to climb to his feet, but was stopped by Watson, slamming him back down. I believe I am owed an explanation, my lady. I traveled to the Baker Street office where you claimed to be working, but to my shock, there was no one inside. It was the landlady who informed me of a client's arrival earlier in the day. I come to this client's home to fetch you, and what should I find but you held at gunpoint? I was certainly not prepared for this. W well Pendleton had such an aura of intimidation that I could not respond. You might have been dead had I arrived minutes later. I hope you've prepared for a lengthy lecture for lying to me. I I didn't mean for all this. Emily! Did it hurt you? Watson left restraining Ted to Lot and hurried to care for me. Pendleton was no less livid with him than he was with me. Watson! Just how did you permit this to happen when you were right here with her? What made you think to put her in harm's way? There was a raging tremor, however small to the butler's voice, that was similar to a pot close to boiling over. S sir I'm- He cannot come up with a proper response before Scotland Yard barreled down the entrance. You're under arrest! Don't try to resist! Let me go! I'm not being thrown in a jail cell! Save your energy! You're coming with us! And then the menace was gone. This can't be! No, no, no! All I've done, and for what? So sophia I've had enough! Clutched within the woman's white-knuckled fingers was the very knife she had previously held to my neck. Sophia! She now held it against her own. No! Don't do that! Stay away, my lady. I took the first step towards her before Pendleton forced me to stay behind him. I wish to die! There's no point in my going on! Don't be a fool! The knife's point drew closer to her throat. Closer. Stop! Again, the knife was dropped. Before she could harm herself, Watson seized her arm and effortlessly kept all resistance from her at bay. How dare you! Let me have it! Let me die! That's not going to happen! Ugh. I won't forgive you for what you've done. Ever! But I can't sit and watch a person die if I can stop it. I don't have the stomach to see that happen. This is to help you sleep at night! Don't twist my words. Whether you want to believe it, you're a good person. A bad one would have let me drink that poison soup with a smile, but you stopped me. You feared for a complete stranger. How can you... How can you... His appeal left her without strength in her legs. She was at last tired. Please, don't take the easy way out of this. You can change. As Scotland Yard went to escort Sophia out of the mansion, Madame Janet approached. 
Sophia. Let me tell you how very sorry I am. For what? Why? My husband and I are the driving force behind your actions. We had every hope our son would mend his ways. But it wasn't meant to be. All we did brought you suffering. <laughs> Sorry. And thank you. Madam Janet gently placed a hand on Sophia's shoulder. For all his flaws, he is still our son. Thank you for loving him. Madam... I hope you choose someone worthy of your love next time. <laughs> she did not say goodbye. The madam followed Sophia's last steps, observed her whimpering and sobbing until she was no longer to be seen. I must thank you both. You solved the mystery that plagued our household and more. I cannot be more grateful for the work you've put in this case. The madam was sincere, which, I don't know why, it provided me no comfort. How could I, when this woman suffered all this loss, all this heartbreak within a month's time? I have a final request. You're welcome to decline, of course, but might it be possible to learn your true names? You knew? My! When did you notice? I had a feeling something wasn't quite right from the start. You always had a stiffness about you when addressing one another. I, I hope we caused you no distress. Our intention was never to deceive you. The two of us went straight into a string of apologies, churning them out one after another as though we couldn't get them out fast enough. Oh, you needn't prepare all this fuss. I should simply like to know your names after all you've done. I will never forget the heart with which you approach this case. My name is... is William H. Watson. In truth, I'm Holmes's assistant. Well, you do fit all I've heard about you. As strong in body as you are in heart. And you, Miss Watson, if this young man is he, then who are you? I am Emily Whiteley, Madam Janet. Miss Whiteley, is it? Thank you ever so much. Mr. Watson has been very blessed to have you as an assistant. I... I have. She's more than I deserve, really. Watson? Aww... <laughs> he laughed in a weak, sheepish manner, and it spread to me. A small chuckle turned to a series of chuckles between us. Our work was done. The culprit had been caught, and we could finally laugh at our poor performances as Mr. Holmes and Miss Watson. I saw Watson back to his flat before returning to the mansion with Pendleton. My lady, I dearly hope you will pardon the many things I wish to ask regarding today's events. Consider them pardoned. First, no. I've changed my mind. That you weren't injured and Watson's desperate apologies in the carriage are enough to spare you a lecture this evening. I will let you off easy. You're to not step outside this mansion for anything other than lessons for one week, during which you will be occupied with a series of special tasks provided by me. What? Pendleton poured me a cup of tea. As always, both man and drink were perfection. I accepted my tea with grace as I waited for him to elaborate. If you're curious, the special task to which I refer will involve... Everything you need to learn on behavior befitting that of an upper-class woman. No effort will be spared to that end. Are you prepared? As much I shall ever be. I knew that the light in his voice so well, but my mind wandered back to my actions. 
Through my fun, my lies, through the best and the worst of the day, I had been a child. I'm so sorry, Pendleton. You understand your actions. That is enough for me. Here. I took a sip from a newly poured cup of tea. It's unimaginable to me how love can become so destructive. That love could be so dark brought to mind the case with Alyssa. Because I... I was the one who was seeing him first. I never thought a friend of mine would take him away from me. I loved him. I couldn't understand why he chose Angie over me. I can't stand how much regret I feel for introducing him to her. Love is a pure, well-meant emotion, but such purity can topple with a single misstep. Once you've fallen, it becomes difficult to stand up again. The stronger your love, the harder the fall. It breaks my heart to know this. That love and compassion, such wonderful things, can transform into evil. I will never let my feelings stray from the right path. I swear it. I believe you. Through whatever challenges you face, you will persevere. But for now, you need only to enjoy your tea and indulge in a good night's sleep. Thank you. I will. To be continued. We did it. We finished the Watson episode. When East comes West! Oh, we have the boat scene now. <laughs> and then a lot to skip in this one, actually. There was a distinct chill in the air this morning, and the clouds, rather than lazily float about, were darting across the sky at a rapturous pace. The cold wind served as a sign that we were delving further into autumn. Do you have your ring with you, my lady? Of course I do, Pendleton. You have your handkerchief as well, I assume. Not to worry, it's right here. I'd also ask that you take this water with you. I pray this is enough to last you the day. Thank you. And do not expect the treats I'm sending with you this time to become routine. The Port of London is one of the most lively, prosperous regions of the country. I'm certain it will be a most educational and rewarding experience for your school trip. However... Pendleton shot a warning glare in my direction. For exactly the same reasons, you must be exceptionally careful at all times. Okay, I don't want to hear your lecture again. We're just going to skip through that. <laughs> After escaping Pendleton's lecture, I climbed into the carriage and we set off for the port. The area where we were headed, the Port of London, as Pendleton mentioned, was an area slightly east of the city, facing onto the sea. Despite the name, it isn't simply a place that ships go in and out of. Large ships are also built there, and it's filled with rows upon rows of red brick warehouses. Beautiful white beaches that glisten in the sunlight, and peaceful waves that calm your heart. I rarely had the chance to visit the sea. I'd been looking forward to this day for some time, building up a pristine image of what this particular one might be like based on the books I had read. To my woes, reality desire to not be quite so pristine. Are you sure you're all right, Emily? I can handle myself, Watson. Promise, you needn't keep asking. If you insist. You weren't the only one who fell, if it helps. Lupin had a spectacular fall earlier. It would help more if we moved on from what happened. If you feel as though you're going to fall again because of the wind, grab hold of me or someone else, alright? I will. Thank you. I wasn't expecting the wind here to be so strong. Goodness! Listen in, class. As I'm sure you've noticed, the sea is so terribly unsettled today that not even sailors can bring themselves to sing their merry songs. Mr. Mackenzie held over the wind as best he could, seemingly in a state where he could be easily carried off by the weather at any moment. I want you to take great care not to be dragged into the sea. Just as well, I prefer if you not fall into this here gutter. It has sewage flowing through it, so it would not end well. Ah! 
Mr. Mackenzie. Lupin has gone crashing to the ground in a poor effort to avoid his spectacles being blown off. Would it be alright if I were to lend him a hand? Of course. Please do, Holmes. As Holmes helped Lupin back to his feet, another strong gust threatened the class. Shan't let the wind take me. Not a second time! So I declared heartily within, but to see how even large objects cave to the wind frightened me. And what of that awful gutter? I could fall in and never be heard from again. Ah! Whoa! I'd lost my balance, but with Watson supporting me, I was able to at least avoid falling to the ground. Th thank you, Watson. It's no trouble. Keep a tight hold of me, all right? I will. I still felt a bit unsteady on my feet, and before I knew it, I was clinging to Watson's arm with a strength I never knew I had. So dependable. I, I do apologize for this, Watson. I declared I could handle myself, but here I am. N no Nonsense, Emily. You're smaller and lighter than me. I should say, it's smart for you to be anxious. You haven't a thing to fear so long as you're with me. I'll support you. That's very sweet of you, Watson. The wind was continuing to wrap upon us with all the ferocity of a hurricane. Yet to see the assistant smile brought to me a second wind of relaxation. A moment, Holmes. Yes, Miss Marple. You look less than pleased. I might suggest that you put your man on the lead. I don't understand. Has Watson done something untoward? Indeed he has. Do you see the way he behaves like his actions are for Emily's benefit? He is being too bold. His back brings to mind watching a big, excitable dog wagging its tail. She clings to him and he makes no effort to hide being charmed. It's an utter lack of discipline on your part. I take it you bringing this up means you're envious. Who knows? I'm certainly not happy about it. In due time, the weather made to ease itself and I was finally able to stand without assistance. Thank you again, Watson. I'm so glad you were there for me. Y you don't need to thank me. I was just, um... I was happy to have you rely on me. Pardon? N never mind. Mm-hmm. Do go on. All of his students having calmed down, Mr. Mackenzie once more opened his mouth to speak. Now, the Port of London has a large number of ships from abroad docked in it. Most ships come here legally, but there are some that come here smuggling such goods as illegal drugs and expensive tea. In recent years, there have been cases of not only illegal substances being smuggled into the country, but people as well. It's become quite the conun- S sir Jack appears to have wandered off in the direction of that steamship. Does he have p p permission to do that? Lupin was right. Jack's eyes were fascinatedly fixed on a ship rocking in the waters and, somewhat stealthily, had slowly edged himself closer to it. It's massive. W wait right where you are, Mr. Millers. Everyone needs to stay together on class trips. You mustn't go wandering off on your own. Please! 